Welcome to the Total Boss Podcast, and I'm your host, Cristiano Green, a podcast where we talk about finding fulfillment through self-development, being a leader of your own life, and getting the most out of it as well. Tenacity, originality, talent, authenticity, and being legendary. It's all about living your best life. Hello, 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 all you total bosses out there, and welcome to another episode of the Total Boss Podcast. I am your host, Cristiano Green, and I am a relationship coach for gay men, helping gay men to attract and create healthy, happy, passionate, loving, and most importantly, long lasting relationships in their life. Now, this week's episode, I really wanted to jump in and talk about self care. Now, self-care in general is often, you know, kind of defined by, you know, you as a single person, like a single, singular person, not single as in relationship status, you know, stepping away from your loved ones, your partner, everyone, to really focus entirely on yourself, right? Now, in these moments, you're you're carving up moments for your own well-being, your own self-care. Um, and, you know, often it's really, really been seen as a solo routine. It's really a solo care, right? That's what people would think of when they talk about self-care. I'm, I need to get a massage. I'm going to go for a nice walk on my own. I need to meditate. I need to go for a swim, go to the gym. You know, all those things that you might do on your own, right? Well, in fact, you know, practicing self-care rituals, you know, with your partner has actually got double the reward, double the effect. Now, not only are you going to be reaping those individual benefits that we've just been talking about from self-care, which is, you know, really emptying your your bucket, emptying your stress, emptying your worries so that you're in a good place mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, right? That's what self-care does. But you're going to reap all of those benefits. But you're also, if you do self-care rituals with your partner, you're actually going to focus on deepening your relationship and your connection as a couple. Now, that has many benefits for you in the long run and the short term, right? And, you know, I know that through different studies that have been done that, you know, engaging in personal growth or self-care related activities actually, as a couple, actually makes your relationship more satisfying and it's actually proven to improve your sex life, which is obviously going to be a pretty sweet bonus. So I really wanted to jump in today and talk about what are some of the areas we can do self-care um, with our, our, our partner and what it's going to do, what are we going to be some of the benefits of doing it like that as well. So number one is, you know, setting aside time each day to really talk about your goals together. Now, Oftentimes in life, most people don't even really have goals set out, right? Or they don't, if, if they have goals, they keep them to themselves. They don't really talk about them with other people, right? Now, if you spend time each day talking to your partner about your goals in your life, with re- goals that relate to your relationship with them, goals that relate to you, maybe, you know, your business and finances, goals that relate to maybe, you know, buying a house or buying property or going on a great holiday, etc. All of the things that you might have around that, you know, your fitness goals, etc. When you talk about these consistently, you actually are able to get in some support from your partner, right? You're actually able to talk together about and create long-term vision, which is actually really healthy for you as an individual, but super healthy for you in your relationship because the more you talk about things that are down the track, you start working towards those things, you start planning them out, you start seeing yourself having a life together. You're really setting goals, you're creating a vision, and you're allowing your partner the opportunity to be that biggest support system, which is really going to create extra intimacy. Now, me and my partner, the way that we do it, we go to the gym in the morning and then afterwards we have a coffee together. We go to a coffee shop, have a coffee, and that's really where we will talk about things. We'll talk about what's happening in our day. We'll talk about the goals, things that we're working towards, you know, when it comes to building a house, you know, getting a land, building property, going on holidays, vacations, you know, things like that. We'll talk about that every single day in the morning. And it really works well for us to find that time because, again, you know, right after that, he goes off and gets ready for work. I do my thing. I start to get uh, into, you know, stuff with clients and, and things like that. 
and you know the day gets a pass and by the end of the day you know we're tired to but we're tired to talk about those things so us doing it in the morning really works for us right now obviously when you do those things you talk about your goals separately but you also talk about them together so you might have your own goals when it comes to your own fitness but you might have goals together when it comes to you know building a house or going on a vacation etc cetera, etc cetera. so it's really good that you're going to be able to get those things get support from your partner uh, I know in the past, you know, especially when it's come to, you know, you know, issues with my drinking, etc. I've talked to my partner about the goals and he's been there supporting and how he can play a part in helping to maintain me on my health health journey as well. So he, it's really good to have people in your corner, especially when you uh, have things that maybe are tricky, maybe are things that you struggle with in the past. Having that um, opportunity to talk about those moments, the goals, the vision is super, super important and super great for you uh, as a couple as well, right? Now, number two is always having a project that you're working on together. Now, whether that comes to, you know, you know, building a home, whether that comes to working together in a business, whether that comes to, um, you know, getting a puppy, which is what me and my partner just did recently. We, we, we undertook getting in a puppy, you know, we found a puppy that was on the street that had a home, but was kicked out of its home. And it had no home. And we discussed it and talked about it and said, you know, we're going to take this puppy in. For us right now, that's a bit of a project because we have to, you know, organize and shift our schedules and our lives to to have this new puppy and take care of it and and put it it, uh, as a priority, right? So it's currently a project of of, of us. And and outside of that, we also, you know, are are in works to, to have land so we can build a house and build that together. So we've definitely got projects that we are working on as a couple that is just you know stuff that we can have that's of interest that we're working towards right now you know it's all well and good just to spend your time together you know going out for dinners and you know watching netflix and all those things and those things are good especially when it comes to self-care some of those things are really really good for, for each other right but when it comes to doing things like that and creating stuff whether it's hobbies you know Doing things together like that is actually really healthy for you because, again, you're, you're, you're working towards something. You've got a project. You have a plan. Each person has different roles within the project. Each person's working together, brain brainstorming things, talking about different ideas, and that's really healthy, right? That also gets you into your creative side, which is also a great way for self-care, being creative. You know, you maybe you're, 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 when you're talking about your home, one person's looking at the tiles that they want in the bathroom, the other person's talking about the kitchen or the, the, the bedroom, the layout of the bedroom, what type of, you know, furniture they want, right? So it's good because you both people get to do things separately and bring them to the table as a, as a team. So having a project is going to be also really helpful and healthy when it comes to your own self-care as well. Number three is reading a book or watching TV together, doing things like that. So these books could be, you know, you know, fictional, science fiction, non-fiction, personal development books, right? Same with the, when it comes to the TV shows, right? Getting into something together is a great way to unwind, but also to also get your brain thinking, right? Because when it comes down to it, reading provides intellectual stimulation and it's also a conversation topic which is outside of work and home life because if you're only talking about how was your day at work or what's going on at home what's going on with the puppy what's going on with this then sometimes you can get a little bit cumbersome right it can get a little bit boring at times whereas when you're talking about the shows that you're watching or you're talking about the books that you're reading you know really being able to discuss them together it's a great brain exercise which is again healthy and releasing of self-care it it reduces the stress reduces those higher level hormones that are affecting you know your you going into those stress um responses as well so just really getting into something that you guys can discuss together again you having your own experience, but you're bringing it together and having stuff to talk about. So it's going to really have uh, and and nourish the relationship as well. So really thinking about that on that kind of a level is super key as well. Next one, number four, I would say when it comes to self-care within the relationship is researching and planning your next vacation. Now, when it comes to me and my partner, we like to get away at least once a month for the weekend. 
Now, that's somewhere else around Bali or one of the islands. You know, we've, we've done a lot of traveling um, over the time that I've been living here and we've been together. You know, we've gone to Gili Islands, we've gone to the Noosa Islands, we've been to all the different areas around Bali mostly. There's still plenty that we want to see and do, but us getting a chance to work out where we want to go, what we want to do, the places we want to stay, you know, it's really cool. It's stuff for us to talk about again and nourish and work towards, you know. If we get to go away once a month, that's really cool for us to have a little getaway, you know. Um, we get to plan things. It's exciting. We like travel. That's one of our main things when our relationship, when it comes to, you know, the things that we enjoy together. It's when we get a chance to get away because we get away from, you know, work, we get away from, you know, the day-to-day -day stuff and we get to really kind of enjoy life. Now, obviously, we've got a, a puppy now, so we're going to have to make sure that every time we travel that we take that into consideration. And that's the, the talking about the researching and the planning, whether we get someone to dog sit and look after her or whether we can take her with us, you know. These are all the things that come into play and it's good because you start to, again, problem solve things together. You don't have to go, oh, I've got to figure all that, those things out on my own. It opens up the doorway for more communication, for more excitement and more planning of things that you're going to happen in your relationship. Instead of just daydreaming about it, it's actually planning it. It's actually making them happen. It's actually getting out there and doing those things. And, you know, you create those memories when you get to go on vacations. So all of these things add to extra self-care. So it's instead of just going and, and having that recharge at the self-care weekend once a month, the whole month we're looking at things and planning and talking about it and getting ourselves ready so that we enjoy the time as well so it's continual keeping us our buckets you know in a great area for us especially when it comes to traveling as well so that's that one i i suggest you know if you don't get to travel much or you you know in the position to be able to do big travel trips overseas because right now we're not doing that at the moment we will probably we are later in the year christmas time that's our is our trip we're going back to australia you know my partner's coming he's going to meet my family we're going to be in Australia for two weeks. I'm going to show him around some of the places that I, you know, live and, and whatnot. And it's going to be really cool, right? So that's a bigger one that we're going to do. But, you know, for us at the moment, it's once a month, especially with his work and, you know, how things are going with busyness in my business. Of course, I can work wherever. But if I want to go on a holiday, I want to try to actually have as much time off as possible as well. I don't want to be traveling and working, even though, you know, that's kind of what I can do with my business well. Next one on the list of self-care that you guys can do together is really getting outside in nature, right? Get outside in nature. You know, we often like to get down to the beach. There's so many beautiful beaches here in Bali and in Indonesia in general, right? So getting out to the beach and going for a swim, just sitting under the, you know, the, the cabana, having lunch and chilling out, right? Those are so good for your endorphin levels. They're good for you to relax and refresh. It's amazing to get that nature and the fresh breeze uh, from the sea, right? Beautiful. We love to go into the mountains, right, as well. Like we've done uh, a number of hikes through some of the big mountains here in Bali, Mount, Ab Mount, Mount Batul, Mount Abang, Mount Agung, right? Those are some of the big mountains that we've liked to climb up and hike, right? I mean, those are adventure things. So we're getting outside, we're doing things together. And, you know, as we're going up the, the hikes, it has its hard moments and we work together and we help each other. You know, we've got a bag, someone carries a bag, you know, things like that. So it's, it's teamwork. So getting out there and doing that. We, we also like to get away to other areas, which, you know, the rice fields, you know, go to Ubud, go to Cinnamon, different areas that just have different experiences for us to be outside in nature, enjoying this beautiful country. You know, that's one of the reasons why I came here was I loved the, the, the weather, I loved the people, and I loved the, the surroundings. So being able to get away and get outside, whether that's just, you know, able to, you know, do things as going to the gym, things like that, right? Get outside of the house, doing things as well. So don't always think of it as getting out in nature, but get out to the gym, move your body, right? All of these things will help you with self-care, but also with things you can do together. Like I said, me and my partner, we go to the gym every day together, you know, four five times a week, right? That's, that's something we do. We go to the gym and then we have our coffee. So we have a morning ritual that we do together. That's us reducing stress. That's us having a morning thing together before we get into the, the craziness of the day, right? Now we've got the puppy getting out and going for the walk with our puppy, right? We've found all these different areas uh, around our area that we can walk the puppy and, and she has enjoys it and, and has a good time. So getting out of the house, getting in nature, doing little things like that are a great way for you to connect more, bring more intimacy, but also are great stress relievers because
because you're not just cooped up all the time, right? Watching Netflix all the time, right? I mean, some of those stuff are good to relax, but they can get boring sometimes as well. Next one that I would say on the list is expressing gratitude. You know, talking words of affirmation, telling your partner that you love him, telling him that you're grateful for him, thanking them for, for what they're doing and bringing into your life, you know, Oftentimes, you know, people can get so caught up in just complaining, complaining, complaining about what's wrong instead of enjoying and having gratitude for what is right and what's going well in your relationship, you know, sharing to your partner that, you know, you're, you're really happy when these things occur. You're really grateful when these things occur, that you're, you're loving the fact that these things are happening in your relationship, right? Now, it's, it's great to, you know, write them down and have them for yourself, but if you express them to your partner, how much more intimacy, how much more, you know, love do you feel when you get to hear those things, but also share those things as well? So that's a great way to reduce stress and also feel better in your relationship. Because again, if we're only focusing on the bad things, we don't focus on all the great, great things that happen, right? So if you're going on a date night, you know, these are the things you can talk about. Let's, let's incorporate some activities there and have things that you're grateful for, that you love, that you enjoy, that you appreciate about your partner so that you can do that as well, you know? Also doing things for each other to show gratitude, you know, little acts of service that you can do, right? You know, if your partner, you know, has been so busy and crazy, do some of the things that he normally would do around the house just to help him out, you know? Or like, you know, buy a gift that that can show gratitude, right? Small little things that you can do will show your love to your partner are things that you can bring uh, into your relationship and it just adds an extra level of meaning into into your relationship, right? So that's kind of another one that you can really think about when it comes to self-care. And kind of finally, the, the last one I've got on the list is relaxing and doing nothing together or taking a nap, right? You know, who, who doesn't like a good Sunday afternoon nap? You know, for me, that's probably the only chance I really get to have a nap. Every other day I've got stuff on and I'm busy and I don't mind being busy, so I'm cool with that. But getting out there and taking those naps or, or chilling out and just relaxing together, doing absolutely nothing, in some ways you can relax because it's, it's, it's lowering the, you know, the stuff going on in your brain. Some people like to meditate. Some people like to do breathing me- uh, exercises, right, together. That's all cool. Whatever feels right for you. Now, like, you know, my partner's not into some of those things. And I, and I do those things when it feels right for me. So I like those as my solo self-care things because they're not his interests, right? But again, you know, having a good nap together and chilling out or, you know, whatever it is, being allowing yourself just to chill out, that's a great way for you to be able to just relax and not focus on anything. No TV, no distractions, just chilling out, right? That could be just going out and, you know, having a juice somewhere and just being together in silence, right? Sometimes silence is golden, right? So those are the things that I've, uh, I've got on my list. I'm sure there might be some other things that you can think of when it comes to self-care that you can do together, right? I just don't want us to always be thinking about self-care as a solo care. Self-care can be done with others and can really help you to fill up your bucket. So you've got to focus on this, especially when it comes to building a strong relationship. Now, again, you might be someone who's single and you maybe you're looking to build a relationship. So right now, some of these self-care you can't do you know, with a partner, but, you know, think about, you know, what you're trying to look for in a relationship. You've got to look at some of these things as well and focus because the more we get clarity on what we're looking for in a relationship, some of these things might be on your list, then this is great. You're going to know what's going to be ready for you when you get that relationship. Okay. How do I keep things good if they, if they start strong? Maybe in the past, if I've been in a relationship and we've been causing some of these problems, if I did some of these things, would things be different? Now, we don't want to look at the past with regret, but I'm saying you learn from your experiences by evaluating what you know now with what you had done then. And you'll learn that probably sometimes if you do some things different, you'll have a better result moving forward and it will be better for you both. So I'm going to leave it there. I'd love to hear from you on your experience or what else you think you can be doing when it comes to self-care as a couple or as a, as a, as a co, co-people. And uh, yeah, share it below or reach out to me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all of, the, all, of the, all of the things, right? And I'll be back next week for episode number 50. Can you believe we're up to episode 50? And uh, yeah, I'm going to have a very special episode coming next week. So look out for that. But I'll be back then. You have a great week. And always remember that you have got this and I've got you.